Canon's R5 full-frame mirrorless camera launched quite a while ago, so it might seem an odd time to do a review. But this beast of a camera deserves a fresh look, as it got off to an awkward start for a number of reasons. As the first 8K mirrorless consumer camera, it was a game-changing product. Because of the relatively small body, however, it had a tendency to overheat. Fairly or unfairly, that was all anyone could talk about. What got lost is that it's also a fast, high-resolution photo shooter. And since the launch, Canon has released firmware updates that have improved, though not completely fixed, the overheating issue. With those changes and the perspective of time, let's go see how it performs. I'll get straight to the most exciting and controversial part of this camera, video. The R5 has some extremely powerful video features that few rivals can match, but some unique problems too. You can shoot 8K 30p or 4K 120p video in high quality or even RAW modes directly to an internal memory card. It also supports 10-bit and S-Log recording in all modes. As Canon puts it, the 8K shooting gives you extra cropping or unique angles alongside a main camera. What it does not say is that the R5 is a good 8K main camera. Why not? Well, the main problem is still overheating even after the firmware updates. Canon says you can shoot 8K for 20 straight minutes before it overheats. That's what Canon promised before, but I found that it can now go longer, more like 25 to 30 minutes before you need to stop. And it recovers more quickly from overheating, so you can shoot sooner and for longer after it shuts down. Even if I wanted to make an 8K video, I'd never shoot for it nearly that long. When I did shoot 8K for a few minutes at a time and shut down the camera between takes, I found I could shoot for a full day without any issues. What's more important is how it can handle 4K. Shooting that at 60 or 120 frames per second at the highest quality settings does have some limitations, but they're less severe than 8K. There are no overheating issues when shooting non-oversampled 4K at up to 30 frames per second. If you do that, image quality issues like moiré are minimal because the R5 has an anti-aliasing filter. The sharper, oversampled 4K 30p HQ mode does have some limitations. Canon says you could shoot 30 straight minutes before it will stop, but I found I could go up to 40 minutes. Another option is to capture video to an external recorder from Atomos or Blackmagic Design. If you do that, there are no overheating limitations in any 4K modes, including oversampled HQ. What does all this mean? The overheating only affects people who shoot 8K or 4K high frame rate video all the time. If you're doing that, I'd suggest you get a different camera. If you shoot at standard frame rates with the occasional 8K or 4K slow-mo clip, you'll rarely need to worry about overheating. Besides all that, there's a lot to love about the R5 for video. Canon's highly effective dual pixel autofocus is available in all 8K and 4K recording modes. It also has 5-axis in-body stabilization with 8 stops of shake reduction more than any other camera except Canon's own R6. The video autofocus isn't quite as responsive as the AF on the Sony a7S III, but it's still very good. You can count on it to follow your subject even if they're moving around at a good speed. More importantly, it's accurate and it doesn't hunt back and forth for focus. Canon has also made big improvements in the face and eye tracking autofocus. Again, it's not quite up to Sony's standards for video, but it's not far off at all. Rolling shutter is well controlled in regular 4K mode. Even in 4K HQ and 8K, it's not nearly as bad as earlier Canon and Sony full frame cameras. As for video quality, the R5 delivers. I was able to capture insanely sharp video with accurate colors and skin tones, both in standard and log shooting modes. To really put it to the test, I edited and posted this video in 4K HDR with a mix of 4K and 8K footage. To get the most dynamic range, you'll need to shoot 8K RAW, but you'll only be able to capture six minutes of that to a 128 gigabyte CF Express card. I still got decent dynamic range shooting 10-bit C-Log files though, more than enough for this video. Moving on from video, let's not forget that the R5 is a desirable photography camera too. The weather-sealed magnesium alloy body oozes quality and it's a pleasure to hold and use in general. The grip is nice and large and everything is where you expect it to be on a Canon camera. 
Canon nuked the impractical touch bar from the EOS R and replaced it with a joystick, so the button layout is more like a typical Canon DSLR. It did keep the EOS R's handy top display and mode dial. Unlike Sony, Canon hasn't seen fit to change its aging menu system, so it's as tricky to navigate as ever. You can use the touchscreen to get to settings quicker, but the menus aren't really designed for touch operation. The sharp 2.1 million dot rear display is fully articulating, so you can use it for vlogging or shooting at unusual angles. Sony's A1, by comparison, only has a tilting rear display. If you'd rather use the EVF, it has a sharp 5.76 million dot resolution and 120 hertz refresh rate. That's not as good as the 9.44 million dot EVF on the A1, but it's still plenty sharp and extremely smooth. For a high resolution camera, the EOS R5 offers spectacular shooting performance. You can shoot at up to 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter using both continuous autofocus and auto exposure. In silent electronic shutter mode, it will hit a superb 20 frames per second. That might not sound as good as the Sony A1's 30 frame per second speeds, but in real world usage, it's more than quick enough. With a fast CF Express card, you can capture up to 180 raw images before it starts to slow down. That equates to about nine seconds of shooting in electronic shutter mode, enough for any sports or action shooting. Better still, the dual pixel autofocus kept things sharp at those speeds. That's thanks to the 100% phase detect sensor coverage, along with new deep learning algorithms. With all that, it can now do eye, face, and head tracking for people and animals, plus body tracking for dogs, cats, and birds. Tracking is now faster, smoother, and more reliable, even in tricky situations where a face is temporarily obscured. Sony has been the autofocus champ now for years, but Canon is very close to catching it. The all new 45 megapixel sensor is Canon's best yet. In raw mode, it delivers incredible detail, rich colors, and Canon's warm skin tones that many photographers prefer. ISO performance is not bad for such a high resolution camera, and it holds its own up to around ISO 12800. After that, it doesn't quite measure up to comparable Sony and Nikon models. It did have enough dynamic range to let me pull detail from dark and bright parts of an image, though I saw quite a bit of noise in the shadows at higher ISOs. JPEGs are also very detailed, but the noise reduction is a bit aggressive at high ISO settings. I really liked the EOS R5, despite the overheating problems. For $3,900, it's the only pure high megapixel hybrid camera that does photography and video equally well. Other high-res cameras can match it for photography, but none come close for video, except for Sony's A1, which costs $2,600 more. It just has so much to offer, sharp and rich video and photos, awesome autofocus, class-leading image stabilization, and superb ergonomics. If you do plan to shoot video with the EOS R5, you'll need to think carefully about what you're gonna do with it. Do not get this camera to shoot continuous 8K or even 4K for events, weddings, interviews, and so on. Go with, say, Sony's A7S III if you have the budget. For a lot less, another good option for that kind of shooting is Panasonic's S5 or the Nikon Z6 II. For other types of projects shot mostly at or below 4K 30 frames per second, with occasional 8K or high frame rate shooting, I'd personally buy this camera if I could afford it. The latest updates have reduced the overheating issues, it offers numerous other benefits for video shooting, and it's a great camera for photography. Thanks for watching, please hit like and subscribe, and for more on cameras, check out Engadget.com.